Welcome back to Chow Time Pod. It's your host, Red. I got a video today from Travis Travels to Vietnam. The cost of living in Nai Dang, Vietnam. World's cheapest country. Let's see. Please like, subscribe down below. I really appreciate that. Let's get that chow. It's chow time. I'm not sure if this would be the world's cheapest country, but it's up there. If you live in a Western country, one of your main concerns is probably money. But in Vietnam, you don't even have to work that hard in order to have a great life. It's Let's one see of where the cheapest it does. countries to live in the entire world, but it's the quality of life you can have relative to the cost of living that makes it one of the best places to live, in my opinion. So today, I want to show you around Da Nang, Vietnam. I want to break down exactly what it costs to live here for a month. I think it's going to be a lot cheaper than you would even expect. So first thing I want to do is show you how we live here in Da Nang, so let's go check out my house. Renting a house or apartment is by far going to be your biggest expense. So you're looking at a range of about $300 a month on the low end to maybe $800 a month on the high end. For most people, four to $500 a month. I pay $700 now rent at my place, so that's right in between that. A month is going to be more than enough for what you need. So we'll start with a quick little house tour. We'll see what we're kind of working with here. Oh, again, I live with my roommates and stuff like that, so don't take my you know, housing price as the norm for California. The norm for a one bedroom apartment is like 1,800 to $2,000, so. For this place, I pay $600 a month, but it's a three bedroom house. Oh, nice. Close to the beach, maybe 10 minute walk from the beach. Simple kitchen, simple little living room place to hang out. One of these bedrooms is my working room. I can play some music in here. I can work on the computer. And then there's- It's weird that he has the communist, the, the Vietnam communist flag on there. There's two more bedrooms upstairs. Tons of natural light comes in. Nice balcony in the bedroom. The sunshine comes in early in the morning. So overall, I'm really happy with this place. It's definitely more than I need. So I think I'm getting a really good value for $600 a month. Most people can spend four or $500 a month for one, maybe even two bedroom apartments right next to the beach. On top of that, you're gonna pay another $50 or so for all of your bills, electricity, water, Wi-Fi. So that's the living situation here in Da Nang. It's pretty reasonable. So now let me show you how we're gonna get around town. When you first arrive to Vietnam, you're gonna have to find a bike. Most people are gonna end up renting a bike. I was gonna say, you're gonna need a little matol, what's what we call it in Cambodia, or a little moped type thing. And those are the best for gas, because gas prices in Asian countries are by the liter. And they're not cheap. About 30 or $40 a month, and that's fine while you're getting settled in. If you rent a bike for about a year, you've already paid the price of the bike. So I recommend buying a bike once you're comfortable after a few months. For about four or five hundred dollars, you're gonna get a bike that you don't have to worry about. So for now, let's take a cruise. We're gonna hit up the local market. I wanna talk about some options for food. I love these street markets, guys. It's the best. Sometimes the smelliest too, but the best. So the market is by far gonna be the cheapest way to get groceries. And you can see it's always super busy, it's always packed. The market has everything you need, fruits, vegetables, meats. It can be a little bit intimidating at first, but it's always fun to come to the market, talk to the aunties. You'll get the hang of it really quick. It helps if you can speak a little bit of Vietnamese. If the market seems a little too intense for you, don't worry, there's big grocery stores just like anywhere else in the world. But I recommend coming to the market, get some basic fruits and vegetables just for the experience. I'll I think it's the best. I never, every time I've gone there, I've never gone to the big grocery stores. I, I mean, I went there to visit just because I haven't been, that was the first time me seeing it. But these small markets are the best. You can get the best deals. They can even, if you know the people, they can slice the fruits for you. They can do a little bit extra things for you. It's fucking awesome. I'll usually come once every few days. I can spend about $10 and get a bunch of fruit and vegetables that I'll use for meals for the next few days. That is the difference between, you know, those countries and here. Refrigeration isn't as good. Power isn't as, like, stable. So most people just buy groceries and things like that every other day or so. 
So it's, they go to the market very often. My family, you go to the market probably two to three times a week and get the groceries they need and, you know, do their thing. Just for reference, I got all of this from the market for less than $5 total. If you're living in Vietnam, you're gonna be eating out for Vietnamese food a lot. And there's a lot of options, so I guarantee you're gonna find something that you fall in love with. This is one of my favorites. This is Kham Sun Op La. So this is rice and a pork chop with an egg on top. I always order a little bit extra crispy pork on the side. This is Pit Hat Play. Comes with some salad. There's always free tea and water, so you don't even have to pay for an extra drink. So a meal. That is the fun part about Asian countries. They do give you tea water, I guess, free. Like this is going to cost. It's also because, like, at least in my country, the water isn't the best, like fresh water. So you always want to at least boil it or whatever. So that's why they, the, the, they give up the, the tea for free. About 50K, 60K, so a little over $2 maybe. <clears throat> so Vietnamese meals will always run around maybe one to three dollars. You could never cook at home, eat out for every meal, and you're still not gonna spend very much money. The other side of it, you see the portion? It's actually kind of small, at least for us fat Americans. When I went to Cambodia, I literally had to eat three portions of noodle bowls and three, two, two to three portions of each of these rice type bowls, because I was a fat ass. Oh, yeah. So whatever he's saying, two bucks, Make it times two, they'll probably fill you up. So four bucks for uh, two big meals, or according to them, it's big meals, but to us, it's probably one regular size as Americans. Mm. If you want to know more about Vietnamese food, I've got a lot of videos about different meals in Vietnam. So definitely subscribe to the channel. I'm super small trying to grow, so I appreciate your help. Thanks. Give the man some subscribe. He's, he's making great content, guys. This video is blowing up 50K. 500k views. That's why I was like, oh shit, I'm gonna support this man. Give him some more subs. All right, it's a brand new morning here. We're gonna start Passport the day bros. The way we start every day with a coffee. This is about 50 cents for a coffee and a mango. My god, 50 cents for a freaking Vietnamese coffee? You know how much those shits are here? At least six to seven bucks. <laughs> smoothie about a dollar for a smoothie Ooh. so i prefer getting it from the little corner sidewalk joints so we're gonna get some of this rocket fuel in us and then we'll head back down to the beach oh yeah and if you've never had vietnamese coffee in vietnam it's actually even stronger than it is here <laughs> if you're gonna be living in a beach town you're probably gonna want to get fit right so the vietnamese are super active, so there's a lot of options. You can't go very far in Vietnam without finding some dip bars or pull-up bars for free on the sidewalk or in a nice. park. And you've also got a giant free pool over here. Now, if you're looking for a more serious gym, there's plenty of good options for that too. I go to this place, it's about $30 a month. It's probably the Normal nicest gym, gym in Penang. It's got everything you can imagine. All the machines, all the weights. You can I don't see, see any gym thoughts. Dead. Every time I'm in there, nobody goes to the gym. It's even got a little Definitely no gym area. thoughts. You can run on the track here. Free yoga classes. Super nice pool and <clears> sauna area. Even an ice bath. And this thing is serious cold. It's so nice. Another way I like to treat myself is called goi do. So goi do in Vietnamese means shampoo the head. But it's really more like a 30 minute head and neck massage. So it's only going to cost about $2. So it's a great way to relax. Your hair will never be so clean in your entire life. It's the best $2 you'll ever spend. So one of the last things you might be worried about is going out for drinks and nightlife, stuff like that. Of course, you're going to want to have a few drinks on the weekend. Like everything else, drinking is cheaper in Vietnam than in Western countries. At local Vietnamese places, you can pay less than a dollar for a beer. If you're more comfortable with Western style bars and pubs, you might be looking at two or three dollars for a beer. That's right pricey. now, I'm having a big pint of beer for two dollars right on the beach. You can't really beat that. Of course, there's going to be more expensive clubs and fancy places on the beach where drinks will be a little bit closer to western prices but in general should be doing all right
All right, so I think we've covered most of the basics. On average, let's say about $500 a month is gonna get you a good place to live. Let's add another 50 for your bills, utilities, things like that. Let's say another 50 is gonna be renting a motorbike and gas, stuff like that, no problem. The thing that might vary the most for people is gonna be food. You know, depending on where you're getting your food, from the market or the are. grocery store, and how often you're going out for food. But I'd say $200 a month is safe for groceries and going out for a few meals a week. West Dude, that's like my budget for food a week here. Western food, for example, is always going to be three to four times the price of a Vietnamese meal. If you're going to be eating a lot of Western food, you're going to spend a lot more money. So I never suggest like that we have KFC and Good Burger or whatever in Cambodia too. Why would you guys go to fucking an Asian country and to eat fast food American stuff? Just eat the Asian food. Try it all out. Some you like, some you might not like. Some will probably fuck you up. <laughs> so that brings us to about $800 a month. Another $200 a month might cover going out for drinks on the weekends, maybe a gym membership for $20 or $30 a month. So that's being pretty conservative, but I think it's pretty safe to say you can live for under $1,000 a month in Da Nang. If we're thinking about the other cities in Vietnam, Hanoi is going to be a little bit more expensive than Da Nang. I'd say maybe $1,200 a month will cover all the basics. And Saigon is going to be the most expensive, so thinking maybe about $1,500 a month. For me personally, I'm spending less than $1,000 a month to cover all the basics. Of course, traveling on the weekends, going to other cities in Asia, that's all money on top. But $1,000 a month is going to cover your living situation and your food <clears throat> and even basic things like gym membership and your motorbike, stuff like that. So $1,000 a month, tell me where else in the world you can live in a place like this for less than $1,000 a month. So that's a month, right guys? So if you were to travel there for a month, you'll need at least about what, we'll just say $1,200 cash to cover the monthly expenses, but you'll need about, you know, a thousand, $1,200 to about $2,000 for the flight there for a round trip. So it's not too bad. That's a $3,000, $4,000 vacation. You can have a wonderful vacation for that amount. So it doesn't take too long for most people to save, you know, a few thousand bucks. But you can actually get to see the sights and see everything without having to invest a lot of money. You know, you get to experience the culture, experience the people, how different it is. And that's what I always push you guys to see. The difference. The difference. Imagine this guy. Why is he making videos about it? Why is he so, like, excited about it? Because it's so different. He's enjoying his life. He doesn't have to stress about money like we do in the U.S. What is the number one stress in the U.S.? It's money. It's always been money, you know, and money is just so much easier to spend over there because a couple dollars here and there, you're not going to be too worried, right? But unless you have a remote job or you've, you've saved enough, enough money, you won't be able to live this lifestyle for a long period of time. So work towards remote type jobs, work towards investment type things to be able to live there for long periods of time. I know a passport, bro. He's actually my roommate's dad. Again, I talked about him. He only comes back from the Philippines only uh, February. He comes back in February for about two weeks to do his taxes and do a couple other things in the U.S. And then he goes back to the Philippines and he stays there for the rest of the year. You can do that, but he's retired. He has retirement money. You know, unless you're retired and have retirement money, it's harder to live out there. So, again, remote jobs are the best choice. I don't think it exists. I think Vietnam's the best quality of life relative to price in the entire world. If you've got any questions about living in Vietnam or traveling to Vietnam, leave a comment, hit me up, and I'll catch you in the next video over here. Shout out to Travis, that's some damn good content. And he's not wrong, but there's also other options. There is Thailand, there is the Philippines. Those are probably the three countries I could think of. I don't always usually suggest Cambodia because we have one of the most corrupt governments in out of the the three country the four countries philippines cambodia thailand and vietnam cambodia is probably the worst government overall it's generally safe for tourists if you plan on like building businesses and things there it might be a little bit tougher than most places 
but this is why I don't really suggest Cambodia unless you know the place really well and that's the type of atmosphere you want to be in. So please subscribe down below. I really appreciate that and I'll catch you guys next time. Ciao.